my name is Georgia Furry. Uh, I am a barista and uh, hopefully one day again an actress. I first met Maddie uh, when I moved to North Bay for theater school. Um, he had been in a few classes before me and I would always hear about this cool guy who graduated a few years before and we did a few little projects together and it was a blast. I got started doing these body paintings because I thought it would be a really, really cool way to um, embrace a difficult relationship that a lot of people have, which is of course the relationship with yourself and your body. Um, and I've always struggled with my weight and with like low self-esteem issues and I thought it would be a really, really cool way to like look at um, my body as something external to myself and sort of be like, oh look, like I can look super, super cool and it has nothing to do with like um, these elements of my sort of general appearance. Like it's not like, oh my hair looks pretty today. It's like, wow, that paint flows over my shape and it makes me look like a beautiful mermaid. I thought it was pretty great. Um, I think the very first painting that we did is my favorite. Um, it was um, when I chose 10 different colors and I remember you saying that it looked like 80s rainbow bright <laughs> because I picked like neon blues and turquoise and uh, pinks and yellows and greens and um, I had this beautiful like flowing stripey situation up on my arms and it like flowed everywhere and I remember we said that I felt it looked like a tropical fish and that um, has always kind of stuck with me as being like a really cool wonderful thing and I've always loved that one. Today's a really cool way to uh, get another look at the wonderful things that my body is capable of and the wonderful things that it's capable of when I join forces with a wonderful friend to create something exciting and fun and beautiful. You ready to get painted? Yeah! <laughs>
more like chilled out about it than my dad. My dad was an opera singer. Um, and they took me to like Shakespeare in the Park from when I was like four and five years old. So it's just very much always been something I've loved and been psyched about. Um, yeah, and then the older that I got, the more it just became like, this is a viable option. Like, this is a totally viable career choice that people have. Like, and who's to say that I can't be people? Um, I've kind of been out of the game for a few years now just because I had sort of a rough experience that made me rethink uh, the industry as a whole. Was it, was it, was it Canada or college? <laughs> <laughs> no, although, uh, no, that was, that was a, that was a picnic compared to that, to the other thing. But, um, but no, I, uh. I thought that it would be, um, I, I, I think I kind of had some rose-colored glasses about um, being protected by people who, whose job it was to, um, whose job it was to do that, and then that, when that didn't happen I think I was kind of a bit disillusioned, um, but I think this will be a good year for me to try to kind of jump back into it with both feet, so I'm hoping that I can do that soon. I think that's how a lot of people feel about this year. There's a, there's a sense of optimism about this year right now. Yeah, well... Because statistically, how can it be any worse? Yeah, God, last year was a tire fire. So now I just need to complain to Michelle because your song will not stop going through my head. Which is a good sign, because it means people will hear that song and be like, my god, that song. And then they'll think of our show. Affiliation. Yeah, it's perfect. Okay, seriously, this Hitchhiker song will not get out of my head. Is this the theme? Yeah. It's a beautiful theme, but I'm still just like, oh my god. It's everywhere. Stop it. I was singing it at work yesterday. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, it's your doggy. Yeah, Pearl Mocha. I miss her. Yeah. Me and Mo are actually talking about getting a dog soon. You should get a dog. I know, if only so that I can snuggle it. <laughs> then you'd have to come over more often. And I would come over more often if there was a dog for me to snuggle. I guess that's the moral of the story. I mean, I love you. You are delightful. Dogs are like on another plane. Dogs are just like a whole other universe of things I want to love. I get to see a chocolate lab tonight that I'm super pumped about seeing because she's like a, just under a year old and is like super lovey and cute. I know. I have a photo of the first time that I ever met her when she was seven weeks old and I'm sobbing because she's so cute. I'm just holding this dog and like, ah, she's so cute. That was a great music video. We were watching a bunch of music videos before you came here. Yeah. But that one's just so good. Hmm. It's, oh, 
as you're approaching the second so it's Yeah, it's not something I do often. He knows me really no. well. I think I'm more on the train of what this, what this was supposed to be. Cool. A train. It's a train. <laughs> he just draws a steam engine, <laughs> just barreling out of my chest. Burr! Every Christmas I pick a different thing that I like bake massive quantities of and give to everyone I care about. Um, I've never got one. You got cookies once. I did. This year was bread pudding and they went to all my favorite customers at work and like and my boss and like all those people and I got many many nice tips after that. And good customer relations always nice. I worked at Starbucks for this one. I forget her name now, but like she would always come in and give everyone like candies and goodies and whatnot. So we always give her drinks for free and shit. Yeah. Starbucks was one of the more dehumanizing jobs that I've had because yeah. people are just like, "What up? I hate you." <laughs> like, I was working for Starbucks. I worked for Starbucks for like four years. Which, well, hold where, on. which location? Georgia, tell us about tell us about your Starbucks experience. Uh. It, my my issues were more with personalities in terms of coworkers than they were in terms of customers. Like we had a we had a, a, sh a shift supervisor who um, at the particular store that I worked at, Bucket Bay and Charles, up thick. Um, she when we when I quit there were about I, I there was a there were formal complaints lodged. Like um, at least eight baristas wrote like multiple page letters about the like abuses that she like had perpetuated to people. Like, you know, like about the icky, creepy, sticky, gross things that she said to people and etc. But like, we also had some like customer experiences that were less than stellar. On my very last day, actually, a woman threw a venti uh, hot coffee at me. Like right over the counter, threw it directly at me and I ducked, hit the brewers and exploded everywhere. And so that was fun. Hold your breath for a second. Yeah, it wasn't the one she wanted. We asked her if another one was okay. She told us it was and then changed her mind as we handed it to her and instead threw it at us. Okay. When I when I quit, there was another girl who quit the same day. And so and this was at a different story where I tr I transferred. But um our boss, John, this hilarious like he was like a hilarious dad type and you could never quite tell if he was serious. Like he was just a very odd man. He threw like a little going away party for me and this girl. Aww. And we all started like bitching about customers who had but, like wronged us, etc. And one of the girls brought up, we had this customer and we, we called him T-Man. And um, his name was, we called him T-Man. He was the oldest Japanese man who has ever lived. Like, if like you just, you know when someone's so old that you're worried that like if you blow on them the wrong way they're just gonna turn to dust? Yeah. Like that's the kind of old this guy you're was. Like concerned. Yeah. Yeah, like he would come in every single day and I remember on my first day at that store, he like came in and shuffled in, did that like old man shuffle where they can't really lift their feet. And he got up to the cash and just put money on the counter and I began to ask what he wanted. 
and someone immediately like shoved me aside and was like, I got it, I got it, and like got him his tea. We learned, I learned that he wanted a grande English breakfast tea with one bag. That was his order. And he expected that you knew it because he wasn't about to talk to you. But he was just like this cute old man that he would sit at a table and like drink his tea and then he would like loudly hork, like spit into it, like oh. gobs of spit for like the next three hours. <laughs> yeah. Like he would just sit there and be like, <laughs> like every 20 minutes for a few hours. We were just like, he's old, it's, he's not mean, it's fine. Isn't that a cultural thing? I think it kind of is, but any, but like anyway, the bigger thing is that someone was like, "Hey, I haven't seen T Man in a while." Like John, do you know like has anyone seen T Man? Like I'm starting to worry about him because he would come in every day, and John just like did that like narrowing of the eyes, lowering of the voice. He was like, "T Man is no longer welcome," and we were all just like, "What happened? What T Man? Like what did you do? He's so old. Like what could he have done wrong?" Turns out that we hired a new girl who, she was from Korea and she, her English wasn't stellar but she was really trying hard and learning and she was great and we all loved her. Turns out uh, someone didn't get to her before she could ask T-Man what he wanted. He screamed at her until she started sobbing and so John came out and was like, nah, out you go. You can't come back. Yeah. Oh man. And it, we still don't know, apparently she still works at that store but like, he was like, yeah, she won't tell me what he said, so. T-Man had to go. Oh, that's so sad. I know, we were just like, he's so old. He's like, who's gonna give him his tea now? And John was like, I don't know, someone else. I just understood why you call him T-Man. Yeah, because we, there was, there was the only identifying <laughs> characteristic. I was thinking like the letter T. Oh, I guess, yeah. No. No. <laughs> he had like, he had like, the only thing that like, I remember other than the horking of the loogies like that was super distinguishing about him other than being a very 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 old Japanese man was that he had like two inches of like straight white hair growing directly out of his ears. Yeah what's up with that? Like, it was great. I loved it so much. Some people just have weird weird ear hair. It was so long and thick. <laughs> it was just like a lush forest of ear hair. Like T-Man if you're still alive congrats bruh. I don't think he's watching this show. I hope so. I, I feel like I would love if he just like secretly like would like would go home and actually care about the arts or something instead of just like sitting at home and drinking tea and being hateful. Working back into the country. <laughs> That's gross. I feel like this is so much more you and so much better. Okay. The big thing this year is trying to kind of um, get back to, you know, things that make me happy because last year and the year before were a whole lot of making other people happy and I'm kind of, and like then last year I had some, um, right at the end of my year I was going to leave my job and I had gotten a really great job with like, um, it was like my dream hospitality job, like at a comp at a really young, growing company that I was super excited about working for. And um, then inexplicably, two days before Christmas, they called me and were like, "Hey, we've decided we don't have room for you anymore. Um, bye." And I kind of realized, like, I had spent all this time working really hard to try and find a job with like a great company that I cared about, that I was psyched about. And then when I got that job, I let myself get excited about it, and then for reasons that they still like wouldn't tell me, they just decided they didn't need me anymore. Um, and I think that made me realize like, I shouldn't have spent so much time trying to make other people excited about me and I should have instead um, tried to do something that made me excited. So this year I'd like to find things that make me excited. It's gonna be interesting.
let's talk about happy things. Cool. Puppies. I love puppies. puppies. They're pretty cute. Oh, this pink looks lovely. Do you have any like color references you enjoy? Favorite colors? Yeah. Like really bright teal. Like I find col colors are very therapeutic for people. Really bright teal. Especially to be covered in them. It's nice. Really bright teal. Like, like the David's tea teal. Why, why is that color specifically? Um, I don't know. I think it's happy. It's just like a very happy color and when I look at it, it makes me feel good. Like it just makes me cheerful. I like, yeah, bright colors. Like I really like, um, yeah, like bright teal, bright green. The more bright green, the better because it reminds me of um, like summertime. Yeah, the colors that remind me of summer. You know, green, like the green grass and like the water. And the Starbucks. What? Yeah. <laughs> Chin up. Uh, one just straight forward. Just oh, I do like it. Yeah, I love the like blurry colors from the first one that you erased. Oh, I like that. I like the hair shake. Those are fun. I like that one too. That one was cute. You're so talented. You're so cute. I mean, yes, I'm not going to disagree with you. I am <laughs> truly sensational. Um, I was really kind of psyched about the idea that we like stopped and started over when it wasn't feeling like right because I think that's the best part of the artistic process is when you like get to look at a piece and be like, you know what, like it's okay to scrap this, it's okay to start over, it's okay to find something new in it. Um, and while, I mean, while from what I could see the first thing that we started with was lovely, I really love where it went with this like fun and very different color scheme. Um, I love the like sort of splatteriness of it all, I really loved um, the whole process of like getting, um, getting to feel different and getting to enjoy this again. And I love um, like the kind of open heart feeling that it gives me. It makes me feel very like open to the world and open to possibility and pretty and lovely and exciting and fun. And um, yeah, I just love it. I'm super psyched about this one. It came out great. You can hit your own.